Okay, just kind of on a poll first. What grade level students do I have? Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Six. Six. Six grade. Okay. Hi. Come on in. Okay. Um, so kind of just so I get a feel of where you guys are at. Um, I was going to kind of go through how what the kids are doing with IXL, like in terms of what they, how the smart score happens, and then how you can check to see their progress. I don't know how if you're if that's okay with you guys, or if you are far enough along you know how to do that. Is there anything you definitely want to see or not see or any feedback on that? Otherwise, I'll just kind of go through. I actually have my page up, and then I'm actually going through a, a student. That's one of my parents' <laughs> kids. They said I could use their site, so if, if otherwise, I'll just go ahead and start. Okay. Um, I Excel, as you guys have probably um, already know from your own child, is a computer-based program that we use with all of our students, sixth through eighth grade math. They also have started using it in the high school, and I believe they've started using it in the elementary school this year too. Um, so. You, you may already be kind of familiar with it. Um, what I'm going to do first is kind of show you what the kids do and how what you should see from them, and then I'll kind of talk about what you can do to check their progress, that kind of thing. So um, I apologize. I'm going to kind of have to sit behind the computer a little bit because my pen is at, the, the battery's low on it, so <laughs> it's being contrary right now. So I, I, rather than me trying to fight it, I'll just sit here and talk. And feel free to stop me at any point. Um, even though Mrs. Shorty is videotaping, she's also a math teacher, so she can mm -hmm. feel free to hop in at any sure. time. Okay, so when your um, child signs in, um, their name will pop up, up in the right-hand corner. So when and every student has a username and password, they should know that. If um, you do not know what it is, you can check with your 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade math teacher, and they can get you the username and password. So they sign in, and this is what will come up. Um, and then basically, what you can do is you click on, they will click on whatever grade level they're working on, and the IXL objectives will show up for that grade. And hopefully it's not slow, it's been fine all day. Okay, so for example, since I'm a seventh grade math teacher, these are, these are the objectives my seventh grade students may be working on. Um, you can see up on our board, we usually all have this, it will say the objectives for the week. Um, and then usually we also have it on our web pages. And when you go to your, if you go to the grade level workshop at the end of the night, we'll talk about specifically each grade level. Um, each grade level is a little bit different. Most of us um, assign two to three objectives a week. Sometimes the eighth grade is just one, depending on the difficulty. Um, but basically, two to three objectives per week. Typically, we assign them on a Monday, due on a Sunday night. So they have a week to do them. We do, uh, every Friday, the math department kind of takes over the computer lab, and we let the kids, the kids get to go to the computer lab for 20 minutes of their math class that day to work on IXL. The remaining time is meant to be done at home. Um, students who have, don't have computers, we, let, we encourage them to work on it during home base. Um, my kids, my own students, they, some kids come in at lunch if they, after they get done eating lunch, before school, things like that. But generally speaking, most kids can get it done. Um, so for example, uh, my students are, one of their objectives they're working on is E6. Um, and so that's integer multiplication and division. So if I click, I'm not going to do that one because it's already done. I'll go up to one that's not done. Um, let's click, let's just go up to decimal numbers review. I'll just click on that one. Come on in. Come on in. Hi guys, come on in. You're fine. Hi, okay. Come on in. So basically what you'll see is their question and where they have to submit their answer, okay? Um, and so 52 and 4 tenths, all right, so if they put that in correctly, and you hit submit, hopefully Mrs. Gertz can do her math, <laughs> it'll say awesome or whatever, and you'll see the SMART score change. The SMART score in the right-hand corner is what their grade in all of our classes is based on. So when they get a question correct, it will go up, when they get a correct question incorrect, it will go down. So um, we'll go ahead and do a couple more that are right. So which digit is the tenth place? Okay, the five. I hit submit. Keep it up. You'll see the smart score increase. You'll also see the time changing. Um, I can I think I can speak for all of us. We really don't monitor the time as much as we used to. We used to count that, but some kids would take a lot longer an objective than others. So we really just look at accuracy. Are they getting it? Are they understanding the material? Um, 
So let's say we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six tenths. We'll get one more correct and then we'll do it around. Wrong. You're fine. Okay, so as you can see, the SMART score continues to go up. In a minute, I'll show you the kind of the grading scale for that. But generally speaking, we're looking for students to get a SMART score of 90 or higher. So if you would equate it to like a 90%, kind of that way. Um, and that's to get the full points for that objective. I encourage, as I'm sure Mrs. Shorting and the other math teachers do, I encourage them to go for 100 because you, the higher level the SMART score, the harder the questions are. And so I encourage them to try for 100 to challenge themselves. But if they're really struggling, you know, you don't want to have them spend three hours on an objective. Just don't, I mean, it's, that shouldn't be happening. And um, if you are finding that they're really struggling with an objective, then they need to come see one of their math teacher. I mean, there's no reason. They, the, typically, the objectives are ones we are, are tied to what's going on in the classroom. Um, like this week, one of my objectives is uh, F3, which is fraction work. And it's not what we're doing right now. We're doing integers, which is what E6 and E7 are. But fractions should be reviewed from sixth grade. So it's usually either one we're definitely have done before or we're working on right now, or they've seen it in a previous grade level or whatever. OK, so this one is six tenths, and they're asking which one is equivalent to it. So I'm going to get this one wrong. And then you can see, sorry, incorrect, the correct answer is. And then it continues to explain and show the kids why it's incorrect, why, what you should have done, things like that. Now, we really try to encourage the kids to read the expl explanation, um, and we ask you to do the same. But sometimes they just, oh, oh I got it. Click, click. They, some kids get in the habit of don't, they don't even look at it, and they click got it. And then they get another one, and they miss it. And the SMART score will continue to decrease if they keep missing them. So really encourage them to use the explanation, or especially like if we're in the lab on Friday to put their hand up, the skirts. <laughs> I need help. I keep missing these. I mean, that's, you know, that's what they should do, okay? Not to just keep clicking, missing, missing, missing. So when they get to the SMART score of 90, then they officially are done with the objective. They can be done at 90. Um, and it may vary a little bit depending on the teacher, but pretty much I think we all use the mm -hmm. flat line of 90 or higher. Um, while we're talking about that, let me bring this up. Every student got one of these at the beginning of the school year. This is how they are graded. So, for example, as I mentioned, to get, a nine, to get the full five points, IXL objectives are worth five points each. They have to get between a 90 and a 100. If they get 86 to 89, they get four and a half points, which is like a B and 90 percent, and so on. It's very, it's pretty much comparable to the Olympia grading scale. If you, the Olympia grading scales, 94 to 100 is an A, 86 to 93 is a B, um, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, if they don't do anything on an objective, they don't get any points for the week. Okay? In my class, um, I do typically give three objectives a week, so they, then it's worth 15 points in a week. So mm -hmm. five per objective or 15 points total. Mm -hmm. um, and any questions about that grading scale? Uh, most of us, um, we do allow students to finish it late. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, the, the kids always ask, what time's the deadline? Midnight, Sunday night, what time is it? And I laugh because um, I say, well, you should be in bed at midnight anyway. <laughs> you should not be doing your IXL at midnight on a Sunday night. So, well, you shouldn't have to worry about that. When you go to bed at 10 o'clock, it should be done. Um, but just, again, for those of you that came in late, we assign these on a Monday. They have till Sunday to do them. So if they're waiting till 9 p.m. on Sunday night, that's a habit that they need to break. Um, we just really discourage that. Uh, I tell kids that what I recommend is start every objective during the week. So some kids really rush and try to get one completely done and then another one. And the issue is, like for example, let's say Johnny gets home on Sunday and has no clue how to do F3 because he hasn't started it. Well, now it's too late. I mean, it's not too late, but He's like, oh, I need help from Mrs. Gertz. So I always tell the kids, start each objective before Friday, so that when Friday we're in the lab, if they're stuck on an objective, they can ask us about it. They're like, oh, I was really starting to struggle with this one. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. you, they don't have to do that, but that's something I kind of recommend to kids that start getting stuck on one in particular, then they can ask me about it. 
As far as objectives being finished after the due date, most of us are um, lenient about that. Uh, I think Ms. Schwarty and I both are fairly um, on the same page on this in that if they uh, finish it after the due date, they can get most of their points back, mm -hmm. but not the full points. So for example, if they finish, that, finish it after the due date and they get a 90 SMART score, which is a 5, I bump it down to a 4.5. Yeah, I sure. drop it a half point from what they would have gotten. So like if they would have got, if they got a 75, like the Tuesday after it was due, that's a 3.5, it drops down to a 3. And Eric, you can check with your individual math teacher, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, that's kind of how we do that. In my class, um, they get an extra one week to do an IXL objective after the due date. After a week, I, I, won't, I won't take it for points. They can still do it for practice, mm -hmm. but I won't take it for points. Okay? Is there any questions about that? Okay. All right, so let me close that. All right. So um, a couple other things. If you were, if you're in under your child, um, if we go back, to, if we go to the state standards, I want to show you that for a minute. Let's see. Actually, I'm, you know, am I under Blake? Okay, I'm under Blake. I'll show you that in a second. Let me go back to Blake's on the homepage. All right. Um, okay, so if you're under your child, um, the other thing I want to call your attention to is on the front page. So um, Blake's actually an eighth grader, and he's in the Algebra One class. So I'm going to bring, I'm just going to bring that up, and I can show this up here to you guys. I don't know if you've already noticed this, but this is a quick check for you. So if you know that they're supposed to be working on A1 for the week, this is what they currently have. He has been working on it. He has a 91, and technically he's done with that objective. So if Susie comes home and says, "Oh, I'm done with, I'm done with A5, Mom, no worries." Well, if you look at A5, there is no SMART score. This student has not even touched A5. So this is a good way to just do a quick check to see if they have it done or not. Um, the only thing that would be an issue is sometimes, depending on um, their ability level, if they're struggling, or if we feel like we need to challenge them a little bit, sometimes we might put them at a different grade level. And so if they've done it the year before, it might show up that they've done it. So I can show you how you can check for the school year to see if they've really done it this year, um, that kind of thing. So but this is just kind of an overall quick, and generally speaking, the kids are in the grade level that they're at. So like, for example, my students right now are all in the seventh grade library. The sixth grade mm -hmm. students are all in the sixth grade library. Um, so you would just go to your particular grade level to see if they're, what they've been working on. Okay, mm -hmm. is there questions about that? Okay. On occasion, I will assign something that's not in my grade okay. level, and that might just be because what's at the sixth grade level doesn't quite fit what we're doing, or they just really need some good practice. I might say, okay, this week we're going to do fifth grade, and I'll make that very clear to them, so they should know that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to um, the front page. Okay, so if I'm at home, and I'm Blake's mom, and I want to check where we're at, this is, like I said, a quick check to see if they've been working on it. But then you can go to reports, and really, in my opinion, the overview right over here, that's, I mean, that's the one that I would say is probably the best one to use, generally speaking, as a parent. A couple things that you need to be careful of. Um, up here in the date range, so for example, say it's Sunday night, and you want to know if they have their objectives done. Then under date range, you could pick this week and it's set for Monday to Sunday it actually defaulted that way which is perfect so you can check to see did they do what they were supposed to do for this week is it already done you can see for each day how many minutes they worked um, and then you can see their objectives now in um, it, this particular case the student only had two objectives they were assigned but you can see they're 91 91 they're done okay so you can always do that the, the category shows up as all. Uh, you can change it if you want to just look. Like by the end of the year, you might have a lot of ob objectives. But, but if you select this week, you really shouldn't have that many. Mm -hmm. A common mistake I see parents do is they'll pick, it, I think it might even default to school year, and then they get everything for the school year. So it's better to either select this week or, for example, maybe you get on Skyward and it's, Tuesday, 
and you see a zero out of 15. And you're like, oh, what happened? Johnny said he did his IXL objectives. Well, then you can click on last week because it'll already be, you know, the late one. Hit, hit last week and hit update report, and it'll show you did Johnny do his objectives last week. So you can look, and if, if they didn't, this is going to be completely blank. There's not going to be anything there. Um, some parents like the performance page because then you can break it down specifically by skill. Uh, and this is from the main page. So like, uh, my, let me go to seventh grade. And my students are working on integers right now. Now he will, this won't work for him because he's, he's in algebra, but if I hit update report, and he has done nothing on integers. So you can actually select the category. And if, if you're wondering where those categories are, remember they are back in the front, the very front. Each heading. So there's the, there's the headings, the skills, transformations, ratios, and proportions. So if you just want to look at one particular skill, you can do that. Um, I don't know, did, was, was anybody at the Common Core workshop with Mr. Walsh? Has anybody been to that one? Okay. Well, under the, uh, if you go to the state standards, if you want to kind of see, you know, what's going on with that, if I click on, for example, seventh grade, and I check, and sometimes it defaults to the Illinois Learning Standards. I'm not sure why, because the Illinois Learning Standards, as you probably have found out, are going to be obsolete. This is the last year we'll get the ISATs. So um, I, if you want to know what standards they should be working on in 7th grade, click on the one that says Incorporating the Common Core. And you can see, these are what students should be working on, or will be working on in my 7th grade class. It also gives them what objective goes with that that particular you know standard. So if your kids are like, you know, they seem to really be struggling with number sense or you know integers, things like that, these are different objectives you could have them work on. At the at the con student led conferences in a couple weeks, we're gonna be giving you their math goal sheets on how the kids did on the math map and reading map for the mm -hmm. fall. And it will show you they are supposed to write down their weaknesses and their strengths. And you'll see that with their um, goals and stuff. So if there, if you find out your student is low in geometry, then you could go to to go to this and say, okay, guys, we need to work. You know, let's find the geometry. Geometry. Um, Two-dimensional figures, formulas for area and circumference. These would be ones that they could work on. So if you find out, you know, see where their weaknesses are on the map test, if they have any, that would be something they could do. Um, questions, let me stop there.